Hi, this is Shanna with Florabella Collection, and today I'll be showing you how I edited this image using the new color play actions for Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. This video, I am working in Photoshop Elements 11, but this set comes in versions for Photoshop Elements 6 and above, and also regular Photoshop CS2 and above, and there's a separate video um, for that. So here is the image. And here's what it started with. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have my layers panel. If you don't, you can go to window and click layers. But what I don't have is my actions panel. Uh, Photoshop Elements 11 comes with an action panel very similar to regular Photoshop. And it's super easy to install actions in Photoshop Elements 11. Um, much different than previous versions. All you do is go to the little menu icon and click load actions. And then you navigate to where your one ATN action file is and you click it and then it appears here in your actions palette. Now here um, is our Photoshop color play set. It's a very versatile set. Um, it comes with several base actions, all-in-one actions. Um, everything from color pop to subtle colors to black and white, a clean base, matte film, and then you have your um, add-on actions. There's 23 of those, including black and white conversions and tones. And then there's some. Um, there's a recipe maker that will uh, run all the artistic add-ons on top of a base so that you can mix and match and make special combinations. There's special tools and um, I'll be showing you some of those later on in the video. And then there's your brushes, which I use a lot. And then you have your bonus actions that come with this set for a limited time. So um, in this image, we're going to start with clean base. And the way you play an action in Photoshop Elements 11, you just click on it and you click the play arrow at the top. This clean base has multiple layers that you can adjust and um, it also has a black and white conversion at the top. You can just click that on. But today we're going to be working in color. You can go through and adjust. You can brighten a little bit, add some soft rosiness to your image, um, warm it up, which I'm going to do here. Although the add-on actions we're going to use do warm it up quite a bit. A little bit more contrast. You really can do a lot. You can brighten your shadows. It comes with highlight protection built in. Um, but for now, we're gonna we're gonna run some artistic add-ons because we're looking for a rustic, earthy uh, edit. And this set is great because you can opt for clean, bright edits, rusty, earthy edits, deep, rich color edits, um, all sorts of black and whites, uh, matte, soft matte hazy matte, hazy vintage, um, almost anything you can do with this set. So since I am going for a rustic earthy look here, I'm going to run one of the actions called Rosewood. And I'm just going to make sure I'm on my uppermost layer. Click on Rosewood. I can go in and adjust the layers of Rosewood, but I'm going to keep it just as is. You can see what that did to the image. I'm going to go to my top layer and make it a bit more earthy, a little more matte. And I'm going to play Earth. Earth is a stronger action, so likely, and yes, I'm going to have to desaturate that to about 40%. And I'm going to go to my top layer again. And this time I'm going to run one of the special vignettes that comes with this set. There's a mink vignette and there's a midnight. And I like what the midnight does. It adds real edgy blue tones to um, the shadows and the edges. And I'm going to keep the midnight vignette at about 50-60%. So what I'm noticing is that I want it to pop more. I want a little more contrast and color. And I'm going to, I could either brush it on where I want it, but I kind of feel like her skin could be uh, bumped up a notch as well. So I'm going to run um, the action called color pop. There's a color pop, a brush on color pop, and a color depth. Let's run color pop and see what that does. Okay. I like that a lot. Um, it's pretty skin tone friendly as is, but um, you could dull the reds just a little bit, which will take a little red out of her skin. Um, you can also dull the yellows, which will take your green to a more soft green if you want, but this image is dramatic. I'm going to keep it 
um, at about five or six here because I like the lush yellow green grass here. Uh, okay, so let's go down to our base layer here. And I'm going to keep that color pop at about 35 or so. Okay, I can always still go back down into my clean base and add a little bit more contrast. Um, there's also a really soft color pop on this layer that you can use to pop your color a little bit more. Um, brighten it up just a tiny bit more. Maybe I like my images really bright. Okay. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just use some of these brushes. I love the blush brush. I use it all the time. And I'm going to run it twice because I'm going to show you how you don't only have to use it on skin. So make sure you click your brush tool right here. I'm on a soft brush. You can tell by the soft edges. I'm going to bring my opacity to about 50 or so so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to zoom in and just add a little bit of rosiness to her cheeks there. Okay, I can decrease the opacity and just ease it up until it looks natural, about 45%. And um, I can also use the blush brush to add a little bit of interest to my greens here. See where there's the, the leaves? It makes it look a little bit more like fall. Okay, I like that. The only other thing I would do is run my neutralizer brush. I'm noticing that her black shirt is looking blue and I want it to look more neutral. So I'm just going to neutralize using the neutralizer brush those blue tones. I use this a lot on dark hair and dark clothes when the clothes pick up colors from the grass or the surroundings or even actions sometimes in Photoshop can affect your shadows. That could have happened from midnight, but I just take it there and make it a little bit more neutral. There you go. About 35%. See the difference? Blue and not blue. So I'm going to click Alt or Option on a Mac and click my background to show you the before and the after. The only other thing I might do is add a texture. So to do that, you just go to File, and Place, and then I'm going to navigate to where my textures are. And I'm going to choose one of my favorite textures from Texture Set 3, which is sold separately. Um, it's a great set of textures. It's very versatile, has a lot of variety. It also comes with black and white versions and some bonus textures, including some vintage cloud overlays, vintage postcards, handwriting, bokeh. Um, but for now, I'm going to choose the burnished texture. You just click and then you drag your handlebars to resize it over your image. Click enter. And I'm going to change the blending mode to soft light and take it to about 67%. It adds some visual interest and depth. Um, really pretty with this background. I love it. So this is a little bit too saturated for me. It's a, it's a little too warm. We've already warmed the image up with actions. So I'm going to just go ahead and desaturate that texture. And, let's see. Enhance. Adjust color. Um, remove color or you could even convert it to black and white but I'm just going to adjust the hue saturation. It's asking me if I want to simplify the layer, just choose yes. You can desaturate as much as you want. In this case, I'm going to desaturate all the way because I don't want the tone of the texture. And um, I'm going to remove the texture from her skin. It doesn't bother me in this image, but I just want to show you how to do it. So what you do is the third icon up is your layer mask. Click that. Make sure you click on it. Make sure that you have black in your foreground. Choose your paintbrush and make sure it's at 100%. I'm just going to loosely go over her skin there and remove that texture from her skin. Um, there are other texture videos where I show you how to um, remove the texture while retaining the tone of the texture. In this case, we don't have any tone, so we don't need to worry about that. But um, the other thing I might do is go 
take my opacity down to 34% and just make it a little more subtle there. There we go. Here's the before and the after. Thanks for watching, and Florabella actions and textures can be found at florabellacollection.com. Thanks.